Hey everyone, welcome back to another Micrograph Monday. Today we're talking about opals, you know, like the gemstone. Opals are a really neat structure because they're composed of silica nanoparticles, or essentially really small glass beads. And these nanoparticles, when they pack together, form a type of structural color where the individual silica particles are clear, but when you put them together in a specific manner, they give rise to different types of colors. And that's essentially what gives opals their really characteristic flashing colors or iridescence, the small nanoparticles diffracting light in a certain manner. Because these nanoparticles are so small, on the order of 50 to 300 nanometers, and they pack in a pretty regular crystalline fashion, you get effects where light can bounce off the surface or it can go in a layer and then bounce off or go deeper and bounce off and all these reflecting light waves can interact with each other and you get different diffraction effects and that's why you can see different colors like reds and blues and greens. I'm not going to go into the science of how light diffraction works in opals much more than that. If you'd like to learn more, I highly recommend checking out Thought and Porium's video, links down below. It's a really great video, super comprehensive, talking about all the science of how the layers interact and different nanoparticle sizes, how it affects the coloring, and then also just how synthetic opals are made in general. So definitely check that out if you haven't seen it. And this video is actually prompted by that video. So there's a section where he sends off a sample of synthetic opal that he's created to Ben at Applied Science, and Ben scans it on his SEM. And the micrograph that came out of that for the video I thought was really cool. And so I wanted to just see what it looked like under the AFM because they're kind of complementary techniques. Now, I took the easy route and I didn't make synthetic opals. Instead, I just bought some on eBay. These were not super expensive. They're probably not very high quality. They're supposedly natural opals, but they could be lab-grown. I really have no idea. And for the price, I wouldn't be surprised if they were lab-grown. I chose opals that had a nice flat facet, and I was curious just to see what the polished gemstone would look like under the AFM. And it did not disappoint. It's very cool and also surprisingly flat. You can see grinding marks similar to what we saw in the gauge block. And the large scratches are 500 to 700 nanometers wide, with the smaller ones being anywhere from 50 to 200 nanometers and pretty shallow. The deepest pit or scratch was 130 nanometers on average, and the tallest peak generally was about 200 nanometers above the kind of average surface. The surface roughness was only 12 to 18 nanometers, which is really impressive. I took the reading at a couple different spots, and that gives it, I think, an N1 on the ISO kind of grinding surface finish scale, which is very, very flat. Now these scans are cool and all, but I wanted to see the nanoparticles, and we weren't going to see that on all these polished and ground faces. So I took one of the opals that I bought and sacrificed it to the YouTube gods and broke it open for your viewing pleasure. And the break was actually surprisingly clean. I was expecting it just to kind of crumble since it's based on these little nanoparticles just compressed together. But it sheared at a pretty nice angle, which made it reasonably easy to scan. I wasn't really sure what we'd find, but luckily the inside started to show some of these nanoparticles that I was hoping for. So starting from a relatively large scan of 10 by 10 microns, you can see it's a pretty rough surface, has a lot of the little kind of spherical particle nature that we were hoping for, uh, but despite looking pretty rough, it's actually still a pretty smooth surface and has a surface roughness not that much higher than the polished surface. It came in 15 to 30 nanometers, kind of depending on the sample. From there, we can scan into a 4x4 micron view and start to resolve the individual nanoparticles a little bit better. This was already a really cool scan in my opinion, but I wanted to see how close we could get and what kind of detail we could resolve. So I tried some 2x2 two two micron scans. And finally, I zoomed in all the way to a 500 by 500 nanometer scan, which is really <laughs> quite a small volume to scan. On average, it seems that these particles are 50 to 150 nanometers, depending on where you look and which particle you pick. I didn't mention this in the original AFM video, but there are actually different tips that you can load onto the machine for different purposes. So in the first video, not all, but a lot of the scans were taken with what's called a wedge tip, which is a relatively large tip. It has a radius of about 100 nanometers on the end, and it's good for low aspect ratio features or characterizing thin films or doing just kind of quick scans of 
samples that you're not really sure what the roughness is like. So it's a good kind of workhorse probe. But when you want really fine detail or, or probing very small features like these nanoparticles, you need a much smaller tip. So there's a sharp tip you can load that has a radius of only 20 nanometers, and that gives you much, much better resolution because you can get into kind of all the nooks and crannies of the features, which is really important when you're looking at nanoparticles on the size of 50 to 100 nanometers. You need something that small. And it's actually interesting to visualize the tip size in comparison to some of these nanoparticles, and you can see that the tip is approaching the size of the nanoparticles themselves. So we're getting quite small at this point. I'm really in love with these scans. I think they turned out great. It was exciting to see how small of a feature I could scan. I hadn't really gone to this small of a resolution before, uh, but a, a 500 nanometer scan resolving 50 nanometer particles, like <laughs> that's pretty cool. And I was excited to see it turn out as well as it did. Thanks to everyone that left suggestions on the last video about what to scan. I have a big list now of things I can look through for each Micrograph Monday, and I really appreciate it. If you have ideas of things to scan, go ahead and leave them in the comments down below. I don't know if these Micrograph Mondays will be coming out every week, or bi-weekly, or just whenever I feel like it. I don't want it to become a chore on my side, and I don't want to bore you with videos if you don't find them interesting. So if you have an opinion about frequency, let me know. And otherwise, I'll probably just do it whenever I feel like making a cool scan. So I guess that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.